আসসালামু আলাইকুম সুধী দর্শক মণ্ডলী সবাইকে আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি আজকে আমাদের আমাদের নিয়মিত লাইভ অনুষ্ঠানে প্রতিবারই আমরা চেষ্টা করি আমাদের এই গ্রুপের নেফ্রোলজি পেশেন্ট ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট পেশেন্ট যারা আছেন তাদের উপকারে আসে এমন কোনো কিছু লাইভে নিয়ে আসার জন্য আজ আমরা সৌভাগ্যবান আমাদের সাথে লাইভে আছেন ডক্টর রাজেব রাজেব আলোচনা ম্যাডাম উনি কনসালটেন্ট নেফ্রোলজিস্ট হিসেবে কর্মরত আছেন মাদ্রাস মেডিকেল মিশন চেন্নাই হসপিটালে আমরা অত্যন্ত সৌভাগ্যবান ওনাকে পেয়ে চলুন আর দেরি না করে আমাদের লাইভ শুরু করা যাক গুড মর্নিং ম্যাডাম Uh, good morning doctor welcome to our life madam we are very grateful for giving us time uh, it's my pleasure and uh, uh, nice to interact with all of you thank you ma'am amader sathe achen arekjon arekjon otithi uni hocchen mijan rahman bhai uni amader group er ekjon niyomito sodosyo assalamu alaikum mijan rahman bhai kemon achen ji ji walaikum assalam ami bhalo achi apni bhalo achen ji ji alhamdulillah তো দেরি না করে আমরা আমাদের লাইফটা শুরু করে ফেলি ম্যাম ফার্স্ট আই ওয়ান্ট টু আক্স ইউ অ্যাবাউট দ্য জেনারেলি হোয়াট প্যারামিটার উই সি বিফোর ডুইং ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট অ্যান্ড দ্যাট ইফেক্টস সাকসেসফুল ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্টেশন so one of the uh, thanks dr jehra can i call you that <laughs> yeah of course ma'am of course thank you yeah, okay so um the one of the first things we see is the blood group yes so yes. One, uh, in the blood group o positive is a universal donor which means a o positive or a o negative patient can give or an o negative person can give anybody a kidney so basically uh this is uh, uh, what we see first ab blood group that is ab positive or negative becomes a universal recipient which means mm-hmm. that anybody with an ab blood group can receive a kidney from any blood group okay mm-hmm. now if yes. for example i am blood group a then i mm-hmm. can receive from a blood group and o blood group and if i am blood group b i can receive from b blood group and o blood group so this is the first principle we see that is abo compatibility even though now we are doing abo incompatible transplants still ab compatibility gives us a better sort of a um, uh, it's less complicated than doing a abo incompatible transplant and it is cheaper also when compared to a abo incompatible transplant that is the first thing that is abo compatibility now the second thing that we see is uh, the immunological compatibility right what do you mean mm-hmm. by that now ab blood group may be compatible but mm-hmm. is kidney going to accept that person's kidney is something that we need to do and we do it with a couple of blood tests uh, prior to the transplant and this is a very important part of the workup because if we don't match tissue match the kidney from outside it can undergo rejection on table which means that when we are doing the transplant itself the kidney may not get accepted so um as you know unless we are identical twins that is actually identical twins everyone else's kidney we can reject without immunosuppression immunosuppression means drugs which we give to reduce the immunity in the body okay so yes. um so in this process we do something called as cross match what do you mean by cross match we mix the patient's blood and the donor's blood and see from outside whether the cells are getting destroyed or not so if that happens then we know that this kidney is not compatible for this patient we also do something called as antibodies which is uh h anti hla antibodies so we see whether this patient person has antibodies against this particular donor see if they have antibodies that again means that there is a higher chance of rejection now if the cross match is negative and the antibodies are still positive 
डिपेंडिंग अपॉन टाइप ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज लेवल ऑफ एंटीबॉडीज एक्सेट्रा एक्सेट्रा वी डिसाइड वेदर वी कैन गो फॉर सम इंजेक्शन एंड प्रोसीजर्स लाइक प्लाज्मा फेरिसिस प्रायर टू द ट्रांसप्लांट इन ऑर्डर टू मेक इट लेस रिजेक्शन टू बेसिकली रिड्यूस द रिजेक्शन एक्चुअली till now am i clear yes ma'am so yes. in this process the other thing which happens is what makes us develop these antibodies in the first place right so mm-hmm. uh, if you look at it uh, 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 we call certain group of patients as highly sensitized means that they have a high level of antibodies against a lot of people this happens especially in women after multiple pregnancies because obviously we are getting exposed to the husband's um, hla mm-hmm. uh, second um, when we receive multiple blood transfusions so especially young kidney tra- uh, patients who are on dialysis it is better mm-hmm. to avoid blood transfusions and try to go just for other measures like iron and erythropoietin so that we don't sensitize them further the other thing which can sensitize us is a transplant itself so there are patients who undergo second and third transplants so obviously when they've already received a transplant it is possible that they can have high level of antibodies in them so it is sometimes difficult in second transplant and third transplant patients uh, to kind of get another transplant because they may be highly sensitized okay so these are the first two very very important things that we see now the third thing we see is is this person having any infections okay. the recipient because it is very important that they don't have any infections at the time of the transplant so we look for any occult tuberculosis any viral infections any hidden infections so we evaluate thoroughly to make sure that these people are not infected in any way because after transplant we have to give them a high dose of immunosuppression and obviously as you know if you reduce the immunity we are obviously going to have more infection so we try to make sure that the person has no no, infection. no infections at the time of the transplant uh, uh, it is very easy to treat everything during the dialysis process rather than waiting for the transplant and doing things the fourth thing we see is the cardiac status so especially slightly older patients or patients with diabetes we have to see the cardiac status because obviously they have to like uh, tolerate the anesthesia and after transplant uh, they have to be well they should not get any sort of uh, cardiac arrest and things like that so for that we evaluate the heart thoroughly prior to the transplant the next thing that we do is um look at the blood vessels so that is very important because we are going to uh, sew in or rather kind of stitch in the new kidney onto the uh, patient's blood vessels so that blood vessels will be normal prior to the transplant now these are some of the important things uh, which we try to and nutrition so the person should be good well nourished so that when at the time of transplant they can tolerate it very well and they do much better post transplant so this is regarding the recipient now regarding the donor the donor should be fit um so there is no cut off for age for somebody to donate uh for example uh, around 2 months or 3 months ago we had a patient who's was around 55 years old and his mother who was 75 donated the kidney to him and he is doing well so what this indicates is that the donor has to be fit in all respects cardiac lung they have to have good vessels they should not be a very bad diabetic uh, we encourage people to be non smokers so if mm-hmm. they are healthy the age is not a bar to donate in india we do only related transplants where the donor has to be related to the recipient in order to do the transplant in bangladesh also madam yeah. uh, here uh, madam uh, uh, in in that sense uh, we, uh, is there any age uh, cut uh, cutting age for recipient yeah that's a good question so um, mm-hmm. 
uh, see, my uh, oldest person who has undergone a transplant is seventy-two. Uh, But yes. in that, we have to make sure that that person can tolerate the immunosuppression and the surgery. And second, mm-hmm. how much benefit we are providing after the transplant. For example, if the person is say eighty-five, there is no point in. trying to give them a transplant because the number of years after that without a transplant itself may be much lower you get what i'm saying yes so that depends from patient to patient ideally there is no particular cut off but we see how much what is the longevity of this person anyways are anyways. they fit enough to under, so like a 40 year old may be hmm. very unfit for a transplant hmm. but as a 70 year old may be nice and fit so we have to individualize that decision decision okay madam uh, i am translating uh, the key points to uh, in bangla for my audience তো আমরা খুব একটি গুরুত্বপূর্ণ বিষয় নিয়ে আলোচনা করলাম যে প্রি ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট কি কি বিষয় আসলে খেয়াল রাখতে হবে ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট করার আগে প্রথম আমাদের যে বিষয়টা খেয়াল রাখতে হবে সেটা হচ্ছে ব্লাড গ্রুপ ইনকম্প্যাটিবিলিটির বিষয়টা এই যে ও ও ব্লাড গ্রুপ যেটা তাদেরকে আমরা বলি ইউনিভার্সাল ডোনার এবং এবি ব্লাড গ্রুপ তারা হচ্ছে ইউনিভার্সাল রিসিপিয়েন্ট ইউনিভার্সাল ডোনার মানে তারা হচ্ছে কি সবাইকে ব্লাড দিতে পারবে বা অর্গান ডোনেট করতে পারবে এই ক্ষেত্রে যেমন আমরা উদাহরণ দিতে পারি কারো যদি এ পজিটিভ ব্লাড গ্রুপ হয় তখন সেক্ষেত্রে সে এ ব্লাড গ্রুপের কিডনিও নিতে পারে অথবা ও ব্লাড গ্রুপে কিডনি নিতে পারে এটা হচ্ছে নর্মালি এবিও ইনকম্পিটিও কম্পিটিবিলিটি বিষয়ে দেখে নিই এরপরে আসে আমাদের হচ্ছে ইমিউনোলজিক্যাল কম্পিটেবিলিটি সেটার হচ্ছে গিয়ে সেক্ষেত্রে প্রথম যেটা দেখা হয় সেটা হচ্ছে টিস্যু ম্যাচিং হচ্ছে কিনা শুধুমাত্র আইডেন্টিক্যাল টুইন ছাড়া বাকি সবার ক্ষেত্রে টিস্যু ম্যাচিংটা সাধারণত হয় না এই জন্য টিস্যু ম্যাচিংটা খুবই গুরুত্বপূর্ণ এরপরে আসে হচ্ছে টিস্যু ম্যাচিং এর পর হচ্ছে এইচ এল অ্যান্টিবডি দেখা এইচ এল অ্যান্টিবডি দেখার পর হচ্ছে গিয়ে এরপরে দেখা যায় যে এইচ এল অ্যান্টিবডি প্রথম কথা হচ্ছে গিয়ে যদি অনেক সময় দেখা যায় যে কারো এইচ এল অ্যান্টিবডি পজিটিভ আসলো কিন্তু ক্রস ম্যাচ নেগেটিভ আসলো সেক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু প্লাজমা ফোরেসিস বা অন্য কোন পদ্ধতির মাধ্যমে আসলে ওই কিডনিটা নেওয়া যায় এরপরে আসে হচ্ছে গিয়ে আমাদের খেয়াল রাখতে হবে যে এই ইমিউনোলজিক্যাল সেন্সিটাইজেশনটা যাতে কম হয় যেমন কেউ যদি ব্লাড ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট করানোর চিন্তা ভাবনা করে থাকে সেক্ষেত্রে তার কম ব্লাড ট্রান্সফিউশন নেওয়া উচিত এরপরে যারা মহিলা যাদের মাল্টিপল প্রেগনেন্সি এর আগে প্রেগনেন্সি অনেকবার হয়েছে তাদের ক্ষেত্রে ইমোনোলজিক্যাল এই যে মিস ম্যাচিং এটা হওয়ার সম্ভাবনা বেশি থাকে আর এছাড়া যাদের দ্বিতীয়বার অথবা তৃতীয়বার ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট হয়েছে তাদের ক্ষেত্রেও এই ইমোনোলজিক্যাল মিস ম্যাচ হওয়ার সম্ভাবনাটা বেশি থাকে এরপর আরেকটা গুরুত্বপূর্ণ ফ্যাক্টর প্রি ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট যে জিনিসটা খেয়াল রাখতে হবে সেটা হচ্ছে ইনফেকশন কারো যদি এমনি ট্রান্সপ্লান্টের পর ইমনো সাপ্রেশন দেওয়া হয় সেক্ষেত্রে কিন্তু এই ইনফেকশন গুলোর হওয়ার চান্স বেশি থাকে এখন কারো যদি আগে থেকে কোনো ইনফেকশন প্রেজেন্ট থাকে যেমন কোনো ভাইরাল ইনফেকশন কোনো অকাল টিবি এসব থাকলে তার কিন্তু ওই ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্টের পর সাকসেস আসার চান্সটা কমে যায় এরপর আসে হচ্ছে কার্ডিয়াক স্ট্যাটাস কেউ যদি বয়স্ক পেশেন্ট হয় কারো যদি খুব অনিয়ন্ত্রিত ডায়াবেটিস থাকে তাদের পক্ষে হচ্ছে কি এই অ্যানেস্টেশিয়া টলারেট করে সবকিছু করে আসলে ট্রান্সপ্লান্ট করানোটা খুব কঠিন হয়ে যায় এরপর হচ্ছে গিয়ে যে রিসিপিয়েন্ট যে কিডনিটা নিবে তার ব্লাড ভেসেলের অবস্থা কারণ একজন ডোনারের কাছ থেকে ওই কিডনিটা খুলে এনে একটা স্টিচ করে নতুন জায়গায় কিডনিটা লাগাতে হবে ওনার ব্লাড ভেসেল করে যদি সুগঠিত না থাকে সেক্ষেত্রেও কিন্তু প্রবলেম দেখা যায় আর এরপর ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট একটা ধকলপূর্ণ জার্নি তার যদি একটা ওয়েল নিউট্রিশনাল স্ট্যাটাস মেনটেন না করা হয়ে থাকে তার পক্ষে কিন্তু এই জার্নিটা হ্যান্ডেল করা খুবই কঠিন হয়ে পড়ে এরপরে যে ডোনার ডোনারে কি দেখতে হবে ডোনার ফিট কিনা যে ডোনারে কিন্তু কোনো কার্ট অফ ফেস নেই আবার ম্যাডামের সাথে যেটা আমরা বললাম সেটা হচ্ছে রিসিপিয়েন্ট যে কিডনি নেবে তারও কোনো কার্ট অফ ফেস নেই এটা ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল টু ইন্ডিভিজুয়াল যে মানুষটা ফিট যে মানুষটা আসলে কার্ডিয়াক স্ট্যাটাস ভালো তার লাং এর কন্ডিশন ভালো সে নন স্মোকার হেলদি সে কিডনি দিতে পারবে ম্যাডাম যেমন একজন উদাহরণ বলো যে একজন মানুষ উনি কিছুদিন আগে ট্রান্সপ্ল্যান্ট হলো একজন পঞ্চান্ন বছর একজন পুরুষ তার পঁচাত্তর বছরে মার কাছ থেকে কিডনি নিল এখন পঁচাত্তর বছরের মার কাছ থেকে কিডনি নেওয়া যায় যদি উনি অতটুকু ফিট থাকেন 
madam our next question factor we see in order to have we have good transplant success during uh, during operation what factor we need to see during surgery now we are muted please in unmute yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, so other than the factors that I have already mentioned, yes. we have to make sure that the donor is fit to give a kidney. And we mm -hmm. have to see whether that kidney will be suitable for this uh, particular patient. So some of the things we see in the donor are, is the donor a diabetic? Is the donor a hypertensive? If a mild diabetic or hypertensive, we see whether they have any other end organ damage. Like for example, diabetes can cause retinopathy, diabetes can cause heart disease. So we look for both the microvascular and mic macrovascular complications of these issues. We see whether the donor has protein leak in the urine. So for example, if the patient, uh, the donor has protein leak in the urine, we cannot take them as a donor because they may themselves have some kidney disease. Then we also look for the kidney size. So ultrasound is something that we do uh, in order to see one, the kidney size. And that is the first level of test that we do. The next level of test that we do for the donor is look for any thyroid issues, any cardiac issues. Um, how is the lipid profile? And uh, also we look at the viral markers. So we see that whether the donor has any infection that can get transmitted to the patient. So obviously the donor has to be healthy in all respects without infection and without any comorbidities. Uh, we prefer donors who are not very overweight because again, obesity is a risk factor for kidney disease in the future. So our more basic and main idea is we should not harm the donor because they are giving a kidney to, they are or rather they are undergoing a surgery which is not required for them. So obviously, we have to make sure that they don't develop any kidney disease in the future. So these are the, some of the factors that we look for in order to assess the donor. And this is important so that the transplant is also a success. The next thing that we see is the donor GFR. So what we do is we assess this in two ways. We see the creatinine that gives us an estimated GFR, not a very good uh, marker. We also do a measured GFR with a nuclear scan to see which kidney, uh, uh, what is the GFR of each kidney. Generally, GFRs above 90 is acceptable in younger patients. However, as age goes by, we have adjusted GFRs. For example, a 70-year-old may not have a 95 or 100 GFR. So for that, there is a cutoff that we measure and see whether this is suitable or not. The other thing we do in the donor is actually called a CT angiogram. So that tells us uh, the status of how many blood vessels are there, how are the blood vessel status, how do we do this uh, surgery, can we do it laparoscopically or we need to open. So these are some of the things that the urologist will be seeing in order to assess whether this person can give the kidney and which kidney do we take so generally if for example both the kidneys will not be 50 percent 50 percent it is around less than 10 percent difference between the two kidneys like for example if my gfr is say 90 i may be having say 45 and you know uh 42 or and the other gfr is different so we generally try to take the kidney with the lower GFR from the donor for the recipient and leave the better functioning kidney with the donor. That is what we do. Now at the time of surgery, um, uh, obviously we know we have already planned the whole thing in terms of we have done a CT for the patient, we have done CT for the donor. So generally uh, in my center, we do a laparoscopic donor surgery. But it doesn't mean that open is bad because open can also be done safely. And uh, once we do the surgery, uh, the surgeon will take the blood vessels and anastomose. So in a living donor surgery, the, the there are something called as cold ischemia time that will be very minimum. So generally, it is hardly around a couple of minutes to half an hour to one hour maximum. 
and uh, once the donor does the surgery generally we see a good urine output on the table itself when we are doing the surgery and that is one of the signs that the kidney is doing well the other thing that we do is try to maintain blood pressures post surgery so that the the kidney does well this is immediate post transplant we also give a few injections on table uh, which we start just before the surgery starts these are called as induction agents and these help in preventing on table rejection and also like to some extent over the next few months we generally start the um, uh, immunosuppressive medications a day prior or on the day of the transplant itself in order to prevent rejection and uh, the next thing that we do is time the medications correctly so that uh, you know um, the levels are reached in a good way so there are some drugs like tacrolimus and uh, mycophenolate where we can do levels tacrolimus we regularly do levels and in each part of the transplant we try to aim at a particular level in order to make sure that the kidney is not rejected any patient with any and we also give anti infective prophylaxis like for example cotrimoxazole dr jaira yes. you'll be know that so this yes. prevents it it prevents uh, some of the infections to some extent obviously we cannot cover all infections in the world but to yes. some extent we try to cover we also give antiviral and anti fungal prophylaxis in order to prevent these infections in these recipients as you know in the first 3 months uh, the risk of infection is maximum because the patient is on maximum immunosuppressive therapy after 1 year the number of infections obviously come down the other thing which is very important is that we do is vaccinations all vaccinations we try to complete before the transplant so that the risk of these infections comes down significantly yes ma'am we i have a specific question from our audience 7 year back i went through a, kidney, a successful kidney transplant my kidney function and other parameter uh, parameter were always normal totally protein free urine sr is always very good but doctor suggests to do a pra and a dsa call 1 and 2 but it's a very costly for me doctor will you please suggest me is it really necessary to do that and honestly i am not capable of doing that uh, that type of costly test okay so if your kidney function is normal and you, your urine test is normal i'm not sure why your doctor asked you to do it there must be some reason so please ask your nephrologist as to why they have asked there must be some reason for that Uh, uh regular monitoring of dsa is done in many western countries um if, in india we try to do it but you know cost is a big factor as you know the patient has rightly pointed out um uh, one uh, the dsa itself costs to a minimum of um, around 30000 so that is not easy for uh, patients to pay every time but i do do the dsa test before the transplant because at least i have an idea on what i am dealing with and whether i have to give anything extra or less uh, in terms of the medication but if your doctor has asked you to do it there must be some reason please ask them whether it is just for screening or it is for actually some purpose in terms of he feels that the kidney is some issue with the kidney and he wants to see whether the dsa uh, is gone up or not আমরা যে কোশ্চেনটা পেয়েছিলাম ডিএসএ করার ব্যাপারে সেটা ম্যাডামও এই ক্ষেত্রে একমত যে এটা তো নিঃসন্দেহে এটা একটি খুবই কস্টলি টেস্ট সো এই ক্ষেত্রে আসলে ক্রিয়েটিন ভালো থাকলে অথবা প্রোটিন প্রোটিন ফ্রি ইউরিন থাকলে কেন নেফ্রোলজিস্ট এই বিষয়টা নিয়ে ডিএসএ করতে বলেছেন এটা কি স্ক্রিনিং পারপাসে কিনা না কোনো আদার স্পেসিফিক পারপাসে ম্যাডাম এই বিষয়টা डायरेक्टली আপনার সংশ্লিষ্ট নেফ্রোলজিস্টের সাথে কথা বলতে বলেছেন and we have another question uh, that's uh, if first transplant is rejected by antibody mediated rejection how he should proceed to second transplant what is the easy and cost effective approach for him yeah so uh, this uh, is a is a tough question and it's a tough scenario actually so if the first um, um, if the first transplant has been rejected due to antibody mediated rejection rejection the first thing i would do is a antibody profiling of this patient to see what is his pra pra may be very high 
but what are the actual antibodies he is having in his blood currently so we do something called a single antigen bead class 1 and class 2 anti hla antibodies okay it is done by a technology called as luminex and that is uh, i think even in bangladesh i have seen patients doing it with lalpat actually Hmm. um um so this gives us an idea on what are the what is the antibody profile that is the first step a second step if he has a donor um you know for example if his mother has it is very useful to have uh, the hla typing of the previous donor because when we send it to our immunologist they ask us for all this information actually so uh, hmm. the hla typing of the previous donor if you have it it is very useful for us to see whether these are against the donor or not first of all the first donor the second mm. thing that we do is uh, this may be difficult especially if you have had a deceased donor transplant you may not have the hla typing of the first donor um mm. the second thing that we do is uh, this person who is going to give the second kidney we do something called as cdc and flow cross match now these two should be negative for us to proceed first of all now in addition to this we see the second donors hla typing and we see if the patient has any antibodies against the second donor so it's a three step process and uh, generally what i also do is always talk to our immunologist because that is very important for us to uh, form an idea whether this antibody is an acceptable or an unacceptable antibody so there is so much of it is so complicated and so vast now and it has advanced so well that we do talk to our immunologist and decide okay can we do this transplant or not essentially and is this going to be worth it because finally mm. you do the transplant and it rejects immediately then it is both a financial physical and a mental burden on the patient better burden burden so it uh, it is a total like uh, uh, team approach uh, both uh, uh, both immunologist and nephrologist and urologist uh, for uh, them uh, i think uh, jahid hasan has got our question answer uh, first of all, yeah, we have to first uh, see hla typing of our previous donor then uh, then the new donor and the test required that is cdc and flow cross match isn't it madam and the antibody profile of the recipient and the antibody profile of the yeah. recipient yeah then only we can understand whether this is suitable or not not madam uh, we have another question before transplant which type of test is required for fitness how we know my donor is fit or for or if it or not it um, i'm already question answer de diyechi mena Mm-hmm. we uh, uh that question actually so there yes, are multiple yes. parameters so first is health of the donor itself whether they have any for mm-hmm. any uh, issues for example if the donor has say cancer obviously we cannot take the donor uh for donation understood Because, donation mm-hmm. yeah so obviously we look for cancers infections his general health status diabetes hypertension then we do scan because some people are born just with one kidney so we can't take even oh, if the kidney thing. function is normal obviously we can't take one kidney out of the donor so we do a scan to see whether there are two kidneys and the size of the kidneys are acceptable then we look at the ct as well as the dtpa and we get fitness from cardiologist uh, pulmonologist uh, etc to uh, make sure that the person is fit for anesthesia yes uh you know, we have another question from uh, mijanu rahman So he is saying that patient Mr. Nose rule, second transplant person. After transplant, within five month, he did attack COVID. After COVID, his weight is low, forty five kg. How can we? Uh, how can he improve his weight? Okay, uh, so and incidentally, I know him quite well. So, <laughs> so uh, uh, yeah. So essentially, yeah. So post COVID, we have seen a lot of people losing a lot of weight. He just needs to build his nutrition. This doesn't mean that he gorges on sweets and uh, you know oil and things like that. A good healthy diet with a good exercise is very much important post transplantation. Many people think that post transplant they just have to lie down and do nothing. That is not the aim of a transplant. the aim of a transplant is to give you the best quality of life first 
and uh, when compared to other treatments transplant is the best treatment again i am emphasizing treatment because em transplant is not a cure for the original kidney unfortunately so what yes. we have to do is among dialysis versus a transplant transplant is a better option that's what i we aim and in this best quality of life it uh, obviously post transplant even if i am not a diabetic i can still develop diabetes post transplant because i can, i will put on weight i may be on medications uh, which uh, increase like steroids for example increase the risk of diabetes i can develop high blood pressure post transplant and i have say, seen many people becoming quite obese post transplant so essentially a healthy lifestyle good eating should help him because post covid i've seen many persons lose weight that being said uh, we should also if he is well otherwise then i would just ignore it and ask him to just continue what he is doing if he is not feeling well and losing weight continuously we have to evaluate why he is losing the weight so he may need other tests to see why he is losing weight okay ma'am we have another question what is the best treatment for anti antibody mediated rejection except plasmapheresis and low dose solumedrol how will i prevent antibody mediated rejection so the first thing is preventing antibody mediated rejection is taking your medication medications correctly correct skipping even one day of medications can lead to uh, rejection second thing is um, um, uh, to make sure that the levels of drugs like tacrolimus are within the range for that particular time of the transplant so what we do in the first month versus the first one year is a little different the third thing is uh, once the antibody so if the creatinine is slowly rising it is uh, and your doctor asks you to do a biopsy please get it done because a biopsy is a gold standard to see whether many a times we say no 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 let's wait for the biopsy that doesn't help early the earlier we pick up a rejection the faster we can treat it and the better are the outcomes in severe antibody mediated rejection प्रथम कथा एंटीबायोटिक मीडिएटेड रिजेक्शन प्रिवेंट करा जो नो ठीक ठीक समय मेडिसिन चाहिए था बे इवन एक दिनों मेडिसिन ना ने वा रिजेक्शन का आन होते पड़े इर पर होते हैं कि ट्रांसप्लांटर ए जो नो जाए टैक्रोलिमस लेवल तक ठीक रखते हो बे इर पर आरेक तक गुरुत्वपूर्ण कथा जो दी कारो क्रिएटिन তার নেফ্রোলজিস্ট যদি তাকে বলে যে আপনি বায়োপসিটা করে ফেলেন এটা করে ফেলা উচিত এটাতে কোনো দ্বিধাদন্ত রাখা উচিত না কারণ বায়োপসি একটা গোল্ড স্ট্যান্ডার্ড টেস্ট এরপর ম্যাডাম বলছিল অ্যান্টিবডি মিডিয়েটেড সো দা আদার থিং দ্যাট হ্যাপেন্স ইজ দ্যাট ইন অ্যান্টিবডি মিডিয়েটেড রিজেকশন উই ডু প্রসিজারস লাইক প্লাজমা ফেরেসিস সো देयर ইজ আ মাল্টি প্রঙ্গ অ্যাপ্রোচ সো ফার্স্ট we try to take out the antibodies which are already circulating in the blood that is by plasma peroxis actually hmm. we give something called as iv immunoglobulin uh, that is for two reasons one is it is an antibody against that antibody so i just in a simple word i am telling so that basically neutralizes the antibodies which are circulating it also helps to prevent infection in these patients the third thing that we do is uh, increase the immunosuppression in general that is what you told uh, iv steroid uh, we increase the dose of oral steroids probably we increase the dose of mmf and we try to increase the tacrolimus levels in order to reduce the antibody production right mm. there are some injections like rituximab and bortezomib which we use as per patient basis but at times in spite of all this still the antibody mediated rejection may not respond so that is something which we understand because we have to closely weigh the risk of infection because we are doing so much of immunosuppressive therapies it is possible that the person can develop infection so we try to do as much as possible to remove whatever is already present and also try to reduce the production of more antibodies but we cannot wipe out the memory of the body actually so yes. the immunological memory may remain so we try to just um, follow up these patients post transplant and see how it is going uh, uh, jannatul uh, jannat firdostoni asks 
for those who have kidney transplant and now everything is normal who had passed and who had past history of iga nephritis give some advice to keep the kidneys healthy for a long time yeah so ig nephropathy is one of the commonest uh, diseases we see especially among the younger patients and uh, not so uncommon even among older diabetics etc many of the diabetics may actually have ig nephropathy rather than diabetic nephropathy itself now it is useful that is why pre transplant it is useful to know why the kidney has failed and that gives us because there are a lot of diseases which can come back post transplant and ig nephropathy is one of them so the risk of ig nephropathy coming back is highest after 5 years post transplant there are uh, after 5 years so if you look at ig nephropathy patients within one or two years itself there may be iga in the kidney if you do a biopsy for example but actual damage because of the disease itself may be only after 5 to 10 years but um, uh, so is there anything specific for ig nephropathy currently no that's answer is no but the general things that we do for any transplant that is maintaining blood pressure nutrition preventing diabetes or diabetes has set in to maintain it very correctly um healthy lifestyle maintaining weight uh, and taking the immunosuppressive medications correctly so these are the only things that we can do uh okay she also asked kidney transplant person who's creatine and all reports are normal how the protein in their food will be the best for longevity of the transplant kidney please so advise they can take a normal protein diet all okay. vegetarian proteins are allowed i generally ask my patients to avoid red meat because red that meat. one will increase the cholesterol and it has a much higher level of protein but things like lean meat like chicken eggs etc are totally acceptable try to make it in the most healthy way as possible in general so that they can eat more have but i don't restrict protein in terms of vegetarian dals etc you don't have to reduce because it has very little protein paneer all that they can take mera hmm. uh, mohammad ashraful is uh, ashraful alam asks if we do kidney transplant with plasma, plasma pharesis the kidney graft are same who don't are do who don't do without plasma pharesis i can got that Dr. question Jaira, you, i didn't understand the question i am i also didn't understand the question so i uh, also i uh, go to the next question biopsy of kidney transplant patient showed 60% damage now what should be observed and how to move so it depends on what the damage is due to whether is it because of rejection or whether it is because some viruses like uh, bk nephropathy or is it because of uh, some other reason like uh, recurrence of the previous disease itself um depending upon that uh, we uh, we kind of you know uh, make the we adjust the immunosuppression to a level that does not harm the patient um sometimes if there is protein leak there are some medications which we can use to reduce the protein leak that we can try and overall if uh, this is just a, a scarring which has occurred over time for example after 8 to 10 years in a well matched kidney you can start having a, a loss of the kidney at that time we try and slowly plan for a second transplant or for dialysis at the next point now uh, mohammad ashraful islam, uh, islam asked uh, mm. double filter plasma, plasma pharesis better than single filter uh, single plasma pharesis uh, well it has not been proven to be of better benefit in these patients okay. uh, like it is not uh, like for example in abo incompatible transplants also double filtration plasma pharesis has not proven to be better than a normal plasma pharesis the idea is to take out the antibodies that's all and um uh, uh, another question what should be the tacrolimus level for a non related transplant or uh, uh, no hla matching after 5 years of transplant after 5 years we keep it whether it's unrelated related doesn't matter it is between 4 to 6 oh yeah, oh, yeah 4 to 6 right now madam uh yeah we are asking that benefits of doing transplant 
over uh, dialysis. We have also seen you are specialized in peritoneal dialysis. Uh, is there any specific uh, uh, benefit of doing peritoneal dialysis rather than hemodialysis? Thanks for asking that question, doctor. Um, uh, it's my passion to talk about PD. Okay. So, uh, yeah. so uh, peritoneal dialysis is an excellent modality. In fact, in our patients, uh, when we first, when I first see a patient, and I see that uh, they can, uh, before counseling for dialysis, for example, uh, I offer both, both hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. There are some patients I push for peritoneal dialysis. These are the patients with bad heart disease. Peritoneal dialysis is a very gentle sort of a dialysis and it helps patients, especially with heart disease. Second, it, in elderly patients, again, it is a useful modality because elderly patients on hemodialysis uh, don't do, they, I mean, it tires them out. They have to come to the hospital and things like that. So, uh, and obviously, uh, since they are, uh, you know, older, uh, obviously, they will not be able to um, uh, kind of uh, uh, come to the hospital very often. They may be having bone problems. They may not be able to walk. And obviously, the heart have, may have some issues. So PD is something that I offer everybody unless they have a strong contraindication, which means that they have a very big abdomen with too many surgeries, things like even those patients, we have put PD in our center. Uh, that being said, even for younger patients, like children, for example, PD is very useful. In very young children, doing hemodialysis is very difficult. To get an access is very difficult. To do a fistula is very difficult. Especially, for example, four-year-old child. To do a fistula is very, very difficult. So PD is a better option in these set of patients. And it's a very good bridge before transplant. Bridge to transplant means before transplantation, PD will be a good modality. And we can go directly ahead with transplant when a patient is on peritoneal dialysis. Uh, the other thing that uh, give that is good for PD is that you can travel. You can go to school. Like children can go to school easily. And also uh, they can lead a normal lifestyle. They don't have to stop their work because they are doing dialysis. See, when you're doing hemodialysis and you're coming three times a week to hospital, it's not just those four hours. You have to come to the hospital, go from the hospital, you are tired, the whole day is gone. So essentially gone. four days a week, you you know, you don't have, you can't do much. How much ever we tell them to do, it is difficult. We putting ourselves in their position is difficult. So that way PD is very helpful. So um, yes, the benefits of transplant, obviously transplant is better um, they are than dialysis in some respects. One of it is the quality of life because you do, again, you are not on any modality as such. You only have to take the medications. Second, um, from a cardiovascular benefit, it is better than dialysis. Uh, for example, in hemodialysis, as time goes on, the risk of cardiovascular events is higher when compared to transplant. It does not mean that somebody on a transplant will never develop a cardiac problem. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying yeah. is when compared to hemodialysis, transplant is a better option. Obviously, for example, a 30-year-old, for how long can he do hemodialysis or even hemodialysis. dialysis? We need something. A functioning kidney is always better. But that being said, the patient has to be fit for a transplant before doing it. If we do it in an unfit patient, then obviously, the and it rejects, then the problem is even more than just the patient being on dialysis. So careful dialysis. selection of patients and donors is very important in uh, kind of... Uh, giving the benefit, full benefit of a transplant. Yes, uh, madam, uh, I always say to, uh, tell to my patient that whether it is transplant or dialysis, whether it is hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis, all are blessings for them. All are blessings because they, they are replacing their kidney. Isn't it? Yeah, it yes, is. Oh. That's very well said. The Very well said. That's exactly what it is. We are only replacing what you are Original kidneys cannot kidney. do. But cannot I do. always feel it is positive to have kidney failure when compared to other fa organ or failures. Father failure, example, yes. Liver failure, we don't have dialysis. Dialysis, uh, and right. And your liver transplant is more difficult than getting a kidney transplant. Kidney transplant, uh, yeah. And uh, similarly, heart failure. There's not much we can do uh, immediately. Getting a mm. heart is very, very difficult when compared to getting a kidney. Obviously, heart mm -hmm. can come only from a deceased donor. This so, is uh, 
yes so obviously uh, that way we have modalities to maintain life for a long time there are patients who are on 27 years of dialysis doing okay but uh, mm -hmm. that may not be the case in other organ failures but yeah if you can get a transplant obviously that's the better option of course now we have lots of question i i go to question directly what is the average is the graft survival uh, graft survival rate for a successful kidney transplant i mean how long he is uh, or her graft may survive so in a well matched living donor kidney transplant the graft survival average is around 8 to 10 years this is donor eight. transplant probably slightly lesser Okay, and I'm no. everything is all right. There's no rejection in between and things like that. Okay, in Bangladesh or Kolkata, we do not have option to do a uh, MPA level. So, how could we understand that our microfranoid level is good and or I am taking the required dose of microfranoid? So, not only in Bangladesh and Kolkata, even in Chennai, we don't have MPA level. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, level is available in only one institute, one or two institutes, CMC being one of them. So, if we really need, uh, so gen, but what we have noticed is an average of around uh, two grams uh, in a like you know 60 kg adult is what we generally give. Anything higher than that, we face uh, side effects due to the drug. But yes, if uh, really you need it, we will have to send it to that center only. We don't have easy access to MPA levels. Okay, another uh, our audience asks, what will be the perfect level of uh, tacrolimus after one year of transplant? I think I answered that four to six. Okay, four to six. Okay, um, yeah, Mr. Robiul Alam Munna asks, after donating kidney, uh, kidney, donor can conceive. If yes, after how many days, donor? Uh, yeah, so I generally uh, advise my, see, this used to not be much of an issue before, but currently we know that pregnancy is a state where, uh, and you also being practicing obstetrics know that it is a state where the kidney has to function at its maximum, right? So with one kidney, obviously the pregnancy-related uh, high blood pressure, pregnancy-related protein leak, etc. can increase. So I generally prefer taking donors who have completed their family. Okay. You now uh, uh, another question asked: uh, Is taking my forty th uh, three hundred and sixty milligram is it not good to go to high sunlight? Uh, yeah, it is. Uh, you are asking that a uh, uh, recipient can go to high sunlight. You are uh, recipients. Generally, we advise them to wear sunscreen. To be, uh, generally, so that they, the risk of develop. Though in Bangladesh, India, Pakistan, etc., our rate of skin cancers are very, very low when compared mm -hmm. to people from Canada and you know the white people, uh, Caucasians. That is still, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I, be, I always advise my patients to put on sunscreen when they go out in the sun. Okay, I don't Man, know how I, it's the difference in terms of. Uh, Yes, you can go out in sunlight, obviously, but uh, better to take precaution in the exposed areas. It is better to wear sunscreen. Another burning question for my from my audience: Is microfilament cause infertility? Uh, so, well, male infertility has not been proven at all, and uh, uh, females uh, it doesn't cause infertility. But if a female has is taking microfilament for any reason. For example, we give mycophenolate not just for kidney transplant. We give mycophenolate even for patients with SLE and other autoimmune diseases, etc. Then uh, we will have to stop the mycophenolate if the patient wants to become pregnant. So one thing is very clear. So if you are a transplant recipient, you cannot become pregnant without planning. That's for sure. So initially, at least the first one or two years, we generally discourage a person from becoming pregnant at least one full year they have to complete before we advise pregnancy in young uh, female transplant recipients and when we do we will have to change over the mycophenolate to drugs like azathioprine before we uh, ask them to get pregnant so at least six weeks of mycophenolate will have to be stopped before they can get pregnant because mycophenolate can have fetal toxicity 
we uh, madam uh, here in case of male infertility uh, is there any immunosuppression drug have uh, effect on direct effect on its sperm count well uh, drugs like cyclophosphamide um, can have effect on fertility um generally in kidney failure itself so when somebody has end stage kidney disease and is on dialysis they can have a uh, low fertility their sperm count can be low the motility can be low generally what i have seen is post transplant if they have a good kidney function generally the fertility can become better after around 6 to 8 weeks okay drugs like cyclophosphamide oh, yeah. Yes, can have a direct bearing on reducing the sperm count. Reducing the sperm count. Madam, we have lots of uh, information we have got from you, and we are really grateful to having with a nice session with you. So we are in a at the end point of our to this program. Do you, do you have any special any message for us? so uh, two things so as i told you um um first thing to prevent getting transplant or dialysis is to protect your kidneys first so any if you are a diabetic or a hypertensive please get your kidneys checked every 6 months to 1 year so that early detection of kidney disease is the way to prevent getting dialysis itself okay that's my first advice second once you are on dialysis and you are uh, you know a person who can get a kidney transplant please approach your doctor and see whether you can do some necessary tests and try to start working yourself up for a transplant dialysis wise don't think that something is better both peritoneal dialysis and hemodialysis can be done very well and you can live well on it till you actually get a proper trans don't be in a hurry for a transplant because it is always better to sort out all issues before the transplant before doing it and uh, once you get the transplant make sure you take your medications correctly and if any issue is there please contact your nephrologist or your doctor there uh, because just taking or self medication is not the way to get something sorted out even if you have a small fever it is better to talk to your doctor and then take the medications this is this would be my uh, small sense <laughs> of advice and now well, yeah, yeah, we have we have your advice because you are the person there dealing with so many patients what is what do you feel that uh, everyone should do in order to uh, make this process much simpler oh i, I want to talk uh, talk in the same line with you first of all when we are uh, well we have to be grateful we are well so we uh, we, uh, we we are feeling fever don't go to uh, just go to pharmacy and take some uh, medication if you have pain don't go, go and uh, get some you, you know diclofenac uh, yeah. that type of medication it is uh, impacted your kidney we have to understand that so yeah, our miss factor it is better to always look at always your kidneys to some extent yeah extent because only the, only prevention can make it easier yeah madam madam we have uh, many more question may i get your time for another 5 to 10 minutes sure sure please tell me okay and um, another question is some people uh, uh, in bangladesh are totally tacrolimus free for 18 to 20 years they are not even taking cyclosporin who are recommended to be tacrolimus free well uh, so that uh, initially right now in the initial few uh, years now with the tacrolimus which is so i don't know these patients are transplanted before the tacrolimus era Uh, so once the tacrolimus has come in, we are not avoiding tacrolimus to a large extent. Only sometimes some people who have uh, tacrolimus toxicity, we try to change them over to other drugs like everolimus. Again, little difficult. Um, but um, right now, tacrolimus-free transplants are a little difficult to do. Yes. And um, those uh, people another... have been transplanted much before tacrolimus came into the market. 
ओके मेरा मोहम्मद अशरफुल इस्लाम आस्क माय फर्स्ट किडनी रिजेक्शन ड्यू टू एंटीबॉडी सीडी फोर प्लस आफ्टर डेट कैन आई कंटिन्यू ट्रैक्रोलिमस सम नेफ्रोलॉजिस्ट टोल्ड मी टू टेक ट्रैक्रोलिमस एंड सम वन टोल मी डोंट टेक ट्रैक्रोलिमस व्हाट कैन आई डू व्हाट इज द राइट प्रोटोकॉल इफ यू आर यंग सो या सो देयर इज नो राइट प्रोटोकॉल but we try to uh, keep them on some amount of immunosuppression so that antibody levels are slightly lower so if uh, some so suppose uh, this person particular person is say 70 years old then i will reduce and stop the immunosuppression but if he is if he is going to go for a second transplant it's uh, nice to keep a small dose of steroid and probably tacrolimus on board to reduce antibody level because i'm sure being a first transplant rejection due to antibody mediated rejection c4 d positive rejection it's possible that they can be having a high level of antibodies currently there's no exact right protocol here it would be based on experience okay madam another question we have is uh, is ketoconazole is good for poor people for make medica medication cost less yeah so there are some medications like diltiazem and ketoconazole which we use to bring up the tacrolimus levels uh so tacrolimus acts through certain enzymes and uh, in the liver and uh, so ketoconazole kind of blocks or rather basically it interferes with that enzyme so diltiazem ketoconazole etc can increase the levels of tacrolimus so but that being said we have to monitor the levels of tacrolimus when we add these drugs there are some patients where uh, they are very fast metabolizers of the drug that is they take the drug immediately they will metabolize it so their levels tend to remain low and that is not good because it can cause rejection in order to bring up the levels we generally add the second additive agents so that the level comes up a little faster generally when we add ketoconazole the drug level comes up by almost twice hmm. okay madam uh, so me jano little bit of money because the uh, the dose of the drug is lesser lesser madam uh, uh, me jano rahman asks which lifestyle should be transplant patient in uh, what will be the lifestyle of a, a transplant patient in morning to night transplant in point running trying to study but can't because of head pain uh, i didn't understand that doctor because uh, okay my What younger brother lifestyle is, a, lifestyle is a younger basically a healthy lifestyle make sure healthy you lifestyle, at least healthy lifestyle yeah that's it after And, uh, uh, after transplant is he is constant uh, maybe he can't study due to pain in the uh, head maybe Due pain to, in the yeah he he, he told that head pain uh, what is head pain head pain maybe pain in the uh, head okay uh, yo, yo, they have second question it's creatinine depend on the body weight or muscle yeah After so creatinine is body yeah so creatinine i always tell this even when i'm getting consent for the transplant everybody's creatinine is not going to be the same everyone's creatinine is not going to be 0.7 or 0.8 obviously mm -hmm. if your muscle weight is more uh, muscle mass is more your creatinine may be slightly more so everybody's nadir creatinine is going to be slightly different it also depends upon the type of donor you have had and uh, things like that so uh, size of the kidney all those things matter when uh, the final creatinine is achieved so everybody's nadir or rather the lowest creatinine that they will have will be different and Now, yes creatinine uh, is dependent upon body mass yeah headache headache oh they are it, 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 they are talking about headache huh yeah. so they have headache then they have to evaluate it probably look uh, at the eye first because they may need specs you know the commonest is that uh, refractive error can occur sometimes yeah. uh, because of steroid stack uh, they you can have a cataract so you have to in, uh, first look at your ophthalmology then find mm -hmm. out why if that is all normal then you have to find out why the headache is there okay which one is better as a therapy or microfenart see the current uh, newer immunosuppressive regimens we are using microfenolate but i would not completely say that azathioprine is bad 
but uh, mycophenolate is more powerful than azathioprine. So it depends actually. There are many patients on azathioprine who are doing well, very well. So that depends on your nephrologist and the patient. You cannot just say, but mycophenolate is a newer drug in terms of when compared to azathioprine. Azathioprine came long before mycophenolate. After transplant, when my forty uh, should be stopped? Stop. We don't stop it actually, unless there is infection and things like that. Fistula about fistula they want to take. Fistula should do stop or not? Uh, fistula, I, I didn't after understand. After transplant, after transplant, the the fistula should be stopped or not? I don't uh, do it at least for the first two years because the first three months to six months to one year, especially in second transplants and things like that, highly sensitized patients, there is a possibility that they may need plasma pheresis and things like that. So it's better not to put a line at that time. If fistula is there, it's always easy. First two years, unless it is having other problems like infection or aneurysm, etc., I don't close it. Thank you, madam. Yeah, I am. I'm especially, I tell. I'm telling you that I got benefited from you. I got many things learned from you. So, I also I am grateful to you, and also my group is grateful to you to giving us time. We'll Thank be so honored. So we'll be honored if you uh, if you give us time in future also. Sure, sure. It's lovely interacting with all of you. Thank you, ma'am. So, you. our yeah. So today, uh, we finish our program. Shobai ke shubhchha janiye. Aaj ke amader program ikhani shesh korte. Apna jana be na pader program ta kemon laglo. Karon eita the ki hoy. Amna utcha ho pai. Ije amra aaj ke kotha bolsi shob kichu korte. Amna jodi feedback ta pai. Amna jante pari. Je amader program ta shol apna piye upokri to hotchen kina. আর এই কাজে উৎসাহ তো আসলে প্রয়োজন তো সবাই ভালো থাকবেন সুস্থ থাকবেন আসসালামু আলাইকুম থ্যাংক ইউ ম্যাম বাই বাই